we have uh, a grant from the Arizona Humanities Council, which is housed in the Ella Shackelford House, right across from the track that was laying outside their door for 50 years. That grant has enabled us to preserve a piece of Phoenix history, the trolley cars. That's why we're interviewing these people who actually rode the trolleys. There are not a lot of them around. And we just think it's really unique that the Humanities Council has enabled us to do that kind of preservation. That's a historical piece of Phoenix history that cannot be duplicated. It's a unique set of resources, of artifacts, of equipment, and then of course the restored trolley, 116. When the light rail started, they numbered one of the new light rail cars, 116A, and they made arrangements with Larry to duplicate the sound of the trolley. And that is what's used now, today, on the light rail. It's the sound that the old trolleys used to make when they would come down to pick you up. I met Larry in, um, when I was in my first year at the University of Arizona, and he was in his last year of law school down there at the university. And eventually we got married and we lived here. Well, whenever Larry had any free time, he would be researching trolley cars, and then ultimately he wrote the book, the book. Ride a Mile and Smile the While. That was the logo for the trolley. It was published in 1977, and it's the go-to book on everything about trolleys. There was a place called the Trolley Trailer Park, and when the cars were um, taken off the line, there was a man who bought a bunch of them and used them for housing for his um, workers. When the guy decided to, tr to close down the trolley trailer court, Larry knew where they were. He bought two trolley wrecks and one of them, he and his buddies towed that trolley to Scottsdale because Carl had a barn that was big enough for the trolley and for them to do the restoration. So they spent the next, I'm going to say, two plus years doing major restoration. And then Larry arranged with the state to lease that property at Hans Park next to the Ellis Shackelford house. And they brought the trolley back to Hans Park. It was something that was such a big part of his life that it became a big part of mine too. He was just a trolley nut. You know, he just loved it. And he thoroughly enjoyed teaching people about it. He took the school kids on tours. So he just really loved it. We have so many people who say to us when they come to visit, I didn't know Phoenix had trolley cars. People don't know that. so. We want to share that knowledge. We want to share the maps, the routes, the artifacts, the things that are significant historically about the trolley that people simply don't know. And it's a history. It's a piece of history that's Phoenix history that we want to preserve. I think my first experience on the uh, Phoenix streetcars was to ride the Brill Line with my father downtown when I was still maybe not over three years old. That would have been in 1940 or early 1941. In the fourth grade, when I got a bicycle, and one of the things that the kids did was 
to grab onto the back of the car and ride your bike and let the car pull you. And just before they ended the streetcars, I finally got up the nerve to do it. So I rode from McDowell to Palm Lane, going north on the streetcar, holding on. But then when you let loose, you, you were really moving. <laughs> Once I got a good bicycle, <laughs> I'd be over on Washington Street and the streetcar coming by, and I could run right up with my bike and, and, and catch the bar in that window, and that street guard pulled me for the next couple of blocks. <laughs> I was hitching a ride. My name is Carol Lowe Beath, and I'm of the Mosley clan. That's the Mosley clan that came here in 1909. I think I was two, three, four. I was born in 1937, and so it was early years and not real cognizant of what was going on except for the excitement of going with my mother and my grandmother to ride the trolley to go downtown and see everybody. And I would walk down with mother to my grandmother's house and they would be getting dressed to go downtown because downtown was it. It was where it was happening. And they always got so dressed up in suits and hats and gloves and the nylons with the seam up the back that had to be so straight. And we would walk down 15th Avenue I assumed to Washington and catch the trolley. And I'd be so excited to get on that trolley. And then we'd get off downtown and walk up and down the street with all of the Phoenix people that walked up and down the street and all of the characters. This is my mother, and that's Alta Mae Mosley Lowe, and my grandmother, Vassy Mosley. And they're all dolled up walking on Washington Street, probably in front of Newberry's Woolworth. And this is me trailing behind them. It says 1941, and it's the street photographer. That was a big deal. He walked up and down the street, and he would take random photographs, and you could buy them for a dollar. So and that's this, where these came from. And this was our shopping day out downtown. And we always went into Woolworths, and we always ate at the fountain. And uh, I always got to get a toy, whatever it was. Very, very inexpensive toy. I remember the Indians. They sat in front of Walgreens on a big blanket. We always stopped and looked at them and their pretty dresses and the noise, the people, and the excitement. I was just overtaken by that. I was a, a, a little tiny kid and my mother would take me at least once a week. We would go down, walk down Windsor to Third Street. We were just like a half a block up. Uh, walk down and get on the streetcar. This was the most exciting thing that I could have possibly done. It was uh, very grown up, it was sophisticated, I didn't know what that meant, but I thought it was just absolutely incredible. I just thought it was so exciting to be going down Third Street and looking around and you're moving and there's all these people, and then the closer you get to downtown, the more exciting it was. We would go down and go shopping. Uh, I remember the first two movies that I ever saw. We uh, rode the streetcar down there and uh, went to the Fox Theater. It, it was terrific. I saw The Wizard of Oz, which was magical, and I saw Song of the South, and uh, that was just absolutely incredible. And the feeling of sophistication was, you know, being with grown-ups, that was a real big deal. <laughs> My name is Dorothy Webb, but everyone calls me Dot. When I first was aware of the I call it a streetcar, not a trolley. We were living in Gila Bend, and it was probably 1930, during the Depression. And we came to Phoenix, drove. Washington was the hub of Phoenix at that time. So we went to the Fox Leaders Club at the Fox Theater, and we had probably 
25 cents in our pockets. And we get out of the Fox Theater and there would be the streetcar and it was going all the way out Washington to the Capitol. This is Saturday morning, so there are not too many people around. So we cost us a nickel, five cents, to ride to the Capitol and back. Well, we did that several times. And then we'd go down to the Rialto Theater and watch a Western. We'd go across the street to another movie, which probably cost us a nickel or a dime to get in. I don't know. Well, the good part was we went to a restaurant called the Saratoga, which was on the south side of Washington. And my big adventure of the day was having jello for dessert. You go into the Saratoga and you're seated in a booth and their desserts are all up here on a cross thing that uh, separates the booth on one side of it from the other. And there's the jello up on the... <laughs> well, it was a lot different than hanging around Gila Bend in the summer. <laughs> My name is Frank Barrios, and um, I was born in Phoenix, Arizona, at the old St. Joseph's Hospital on uh, 4th Street. When I was young, Phoenix was fairly small, and the trolley and the electric buses that came later uh, did a lot for communicating out to what today would be called uh, inner city, and but in those days it was called uh, 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 outskirts of Phoenix. This is a picture of the old Lemon Hotel, one of the first hotels in Phoenix. My grandfather bought this hotel in 1906 and uh, changed it from the Lemon to the Gold Hotel. And those are the trolley tracks that ran right in front of it. And again, 4th Street, and the tracks are on the Washington, on Washington. This would be sometime between 1906 and um, maybe 1915, somewhere in there. Okay, this is a, a picture of what the same area looked like in the 1920s to 30s. And as you can see, um, they tore down the hotel and they built uh, uh, another hotel and a restaurant and uh, several businesses in that area right over the uh, old um, hotel. Uh, and my grandfather, the main thing he did was build a movie theater called the Ramona Theater. And uh, just to let you know, from 4th Street down to about 7th Street was considered the Mexican downtown. These businesses counted heavily on the trolley to get uh, business to them. Clear down from the time it was once the Lemon Hotel to the time when you see these businesses thriving in this area. Well, I was going on the trolley with my mother, you know, at that time too. I remember walking north of where we lived about a block. I know in the summertime it was a hot walk. When you went downtown, people from the Indian Reservation or wherever they were would come in and sell their product there. Go into the drugstore where they had the bar store, you know, the store where you could sit there and we would we could get ice cream, we could get um, a sandwich. It was a big treat, a big treat. The other thing that uh, uh, I liked on the streetcar, uh, when I had nothing to do, I'd take it clear out to 16th Street, wh where, where it terminated there. I think there was a swimming pool in there, for one thing, and uh, uh, I think there was teeter-totters and this kind of thing for the kids to, to get on and uh, probably uh, other things to maybe do some exercising and, and that kind of thing. But when I started in the first grade, I rode the streetcar. And we all got out in the morning and waited for the streetcar on the northwest corner of Fifth Avenue in Holly. And uh, it would take us to school at Kenilworth School at Fifth Avenue in Culver. If we had enough money, we would get a hot dog at the Coney Island 
The Coney Island was in the Ford Hotel, which was the uh, terminal, the downtown terminal where you caught the streetcar going north. In fact, you caught, I think, all the streetcars down at the Ford Hotel. I know the Brill Line and the Kenilworth Line, or the number three, were started at the Ford Hotel. My first memory of riding the trolley was when I was three years old. Uh, we were over in Phoenix because my father was in the hospital at Good Samaritan and the trolley went from the capital area to Good Samaritan, so we rode it then. I had never seen a trolley before because I lived in a small town in eastern Arizona and it made a lot of noise, but it was exciting because I'd never done it before. I was totally fascinated because I had never seen a trolley and, you know, it kind of clattered down the road and made a lot of noise as it went. We lived in small towns around Arizona during the war, but as soon as World War II was over, we came back to Phoenix and lived near 7th Street and Indian School. And the trolley ran on 3rd Street down to Indian School and then to downtown. My mom was too worried to drive in downtown Phoenix. The traffic was so horrible, she thought. So we would uh, drive the car over to 3rd Street and pay a nickel to ride the trolley downtown. There were no shopping areas outside of downtown Phoenix at that time. Everyone went downtown to shop. So it was great to have the trolley to hop on. Pennies was there, Diamonds was there, Corex was there, uh, Newberries, Walgreens had a lunch encounter that we loved to get lunch there. And there was a little um, Asian lady who had a little candy shop where you got off of it and we could get a penny candy, so that was a big treat to get off the trolley and get your candy, and then ride the trolley home. With my mother, we'd go downtown, go shopping. We roamed all around. Of course, Woolworths we went to, and maybe have lunch at the Woolworths counter. I remember uh, during World War II, uh, people selling bonds outside the stores, and I remember a time when the Indians had their blankets set up on the sidewalk and they had their wares to sell. They had um, handmade beaded things, jewelry. I remember mainly the conductor. And sometimes he would get up there and he would take your money and put it in. I always call the, the person operating the streetcar the conductor. And of course, the conductor, when you got on there, he had coins, and, and I, I don't remember the exact amount of money that it took to, just to, to get on there, but it was very, very, uh, very small amount. Started out with maybe a nickel, dime, 15 cents. <laughs> but for students, it was four cents. Wow, why, how did that come about? Well. The first Monday of every month, when they asked, when they took the money for eating in the school cafe, they also took money for student trolley tickets, streetcar tickets. And for a dollar, you got 12 pages of two tickets each, but the cover was also the 25th ticket. So every day you, your mother would give you two, two stamps, or two, yeah, transit stamps, and you would give it to the streetcar conductor. And then when they uh, got to 24, they'd have to buy a new one and I'd have the ticket from one ticket from the new one and the old cover from the old one. The cover was the 25th ride. It was a pink cover, kind of cardboard-like cover. And it was the 25th ride. So it's four cents a ride to go to school. I do remember the conductors, how they were dressed. They nicely dressed in a suit and they always had a hat on with a short brim. They really looked sharp. 
There were some operators that were pretty strict and kept you from talking and uh, made you sit down and not walk around. There were others who just kind of let you do anything you wanted to. When the driver wasn't too strict, we talked a lot and kind of played around a little bit. Um, but there were some that got mad at you if you even talked. <laughs> and the, the young boys, I don't care how young they were, there were a couple of drivers that if it was standing room only and there were women standing up, and the young boy was sitting down, the driver would come over and tell him to get up and let the lady sit down. It was always crowded, but I, I loved looking at the people, and it was noisy, very, very noisy. The clang, clang, clang of the trolley, you know, that. I th the loudest part was the wheels going on the track, and that created a uh, a, a lot of sound. There was a bell, uh, but that didn't ring all the time. It was mostly just the the friction of the wheels on the track that created a, a tremendous clatter. Before I was born, my parents lived at 10th Street in Portland, and I understand the trolley went down 10th Street because Mother said the clickety-clack of the wheels going down the street on the on the rails disrupted daddy's sleep. Well, it made kind of clanging noises and if it would stop you you're wondering who else is going to get on, you know, and ride. And you could tell that there were people too that perhaps were um, workers someplace that they would take that trolley car. I remember all the wood inside, the wood chairs. Um, and I remember distinctly the conductor, when it get to the end of the line, how he would slap the backs of the seats forward because, you know, the, train, uh, the trolley didn't move. They had to change the seats. And that was always a neat sound, I thought, because he'd really <laughs> slap those hard to make them move. <laughs> For, first of all, we, we, we sat toward the back, uh, not in the back, but um, uh, further back, not, not in front. And I got to sit by the window, and so I got to, to, to look out and see the landscape going by and uh, see the, for me, the familiar points of interest in Phoenix, things I had seen before. I've been fortunate to see both the wooden trolley and the light rail, and some difference. And it's nice to have those memories. Now, I know that they're calling these things trolleys now. When, when I was riding these things, I, I never heard the word trolley. I wouldn't have known what it was, because we always called it a streetcar. But it sparked my thinking about what was that like? Because I've, I've mentioned taking the streetcar to people, and nobody even has a clue what I'm talking about. You know, they think I'm talking about the light rail or something like that. But so few people have any concept of the fact that the streetcar existed in Phoenix. You know, when you're young, you're so wrapped up in your own life, you do not think to sit and ask questions that come to you later when there's no one to ask. There's so many questions I wish I would have asked. I wish I would have said, what well, was downtown? Well, downtown was Phoenix. It wasn't past Thomas, probably, or even Van Buren. It was a grand time. I loved the trolley.